Hi there, welcome to a new episode of the vlog. Uh, just a few months ago I decided that I was going to start making these little in memoriam videos every time someone who was important to me in the world of music uh, would pass away and uh, they seem to be coming more and more frequently. This is the second week of February and this is my fourth in memoriam video of 2021 so far. Such a shame. Um, but what can you do? I, I'm still going to keep making this series just because I think it's important to remember what these people meant to the world of music. And Mary Wilson certainly meant a lot. Yes, Mary Wilson uh, passed away this week at the age of 76. She was one of the original Supremes, of course. And uh, this was totally unexpected by all accounts. Um, I was actually uh, reading, and I believe it was an Instagram, maybe a Facebook post, from Paul Stanley, of all people. Paul Stanley, of course, the lead singer of KISS. And he said uh, that he was just on a Zoom call with Mary last Wednesday, I believe it was. So like five or six days before she would eventually uh, pass away, unfortunately. And he uh, said that they talked for over an hour, that she was vibrant, full of joy, and she told lots of stories about the past and just seemed to be in great spirits. And I know she posted just a couple of short days ago that uh, she had some new music that was hopefully going to come out in March. So, yeah, this is a shock uh, to everybody involved. Um, I'm going to go briefly into her life and story. I want to make a longer form video on the history of the Supremes at some point. But... In many ways, Mary Wilson was the Supremes. Now that might sound crazy because the first person you think of when you think of the Supremes is probably Diana Ross, and that makes sense. Um, but Mary Wilson was the only person who was involved in all lineups of the group from when they were formed uh, in 1960 or maybe even slightly earlier to when the group disbanded in 1977. Uh, they were they were originally called the Primettes and toured as a sort of sister group to the Primes, who were an early version of the group that would become the Temptations, and uh, both the Temptations and the newly rechristened Supremes were signed to Motown uh, in around 1960, 1961, somewhere in there. Uh, they Supremes didn't have any hits for the first few years. Uh, they were called the No Hit Supremes. <laughs> um, by their peers at Motown kind of as a joke. And this was back in the day that if uh, a record label saw potential in you as an artist, uh, particularly a record label like Motown, which was certainly uh, a, quite a, a family dynamic over there, um, yeah, despite the fact that they didn't have any hits, Motown still believed in them and still kept uh, trying out new things for them. And eventually they found the uh, songwriting and production team of Holland, Dozier, and Holland and they really were just the, the, the perfect sound for them. And they put out a song called When the Love Light Starts Shining Through His Eyes. Quite a wordy title, but a good song. Uh, in that was either late 63 or, or early 64. And that was their first uh, Billboard Top 40 hit. But then after that, they really exploded. Their next single was a song called Where Did Our Love Go? Uh, oh, Where Did Our Love Go? Um, and it was a number one hit single. Um, their next single after that, Baby Love. Another number one hit on the Billboard Hot 100. Then they had Come See About Me, went number one. Uh, a little song called Stop In The Name Of Love, that went number one. And then the song Back In My Arms Again, another number one hit. They had five number one hits in a row. Five, every single they put out was going number one for a while there. It, it's incredible. Um, very few people have been able to do that, very few groups. Uh, and then their song, Nothing But Heartaches, had the uh, distinction of breaking that streak and not reaching the top ten. Um, but in late 1966 through 1967, another run of number one hits. Uh, they had the song, You Can't Hurry Love, it went number one. Uh, they had You Keep Me Hanging On, it went number one. Uh, Love Is Here and Now You're Gone goes number one, and then fourth in a row. Uh, the Happening goes number one. So they had five in a row, and then another four in a row later. Um, of course, the original lineup of the Supremes uh, was Diane Ross, who went by the sort of stage name slash changed her name to Diana Ross. Um, 
Mary Wilson, of course, and the late, great uh, Florence Ballard, uh, who passed away back in the late 1970s. A uh, very tragic story in itself there. I believe they may have had a fourth girl when they were first getting started. I, I, I can't recall her name right now. But after The Happening came out, uh, that was around the time the Supremes changed their name to Diana Ross and the Supremes, supposedly to make more money. Supposedly, they could make twice as much money if they were billed as Diana Ross and the Supremes. Anyway, uh, and then also around that time, uh, Flo Ballard uh, left Slash was kicked out of the group. It's not clear which one of those it is, but again, that's a topic for another video. Cindy Birdsong came into the group. She had previously been a part of uh, Patti LaBelle's Bluebells, and... They had a whole bunch more hits uh, with that lineup, uh, including two more number ones uh, with Love Child and uh, Someday We'll Be Together. Someday We'll Be Together came out in late 1969 and was billed as the last song for Diana Ross and the Supremes. They There was a whole um, publicity um, extravaganza about that uh, Diana Ross was leaving the group and they did a heavily publicized last show in January of 1970, uh, which was eventually released as a live album that I'd love to have. I, I don't have it for whatever reason. But, yeah, and in that show, they introduced the new lead singer of the Supremes, uh, Gene Terrell, to replace Diana Ross. Now, that made Mary Wilson the only remaining original member still in the group. And over the next seven years, um, they had a few uh, hits, nothing quite like the hits that had been had in the Diana Ross years, but still some big hits nonetheless, uh, until the Supremes eventually did disband in 1977. There was a great reunion, though, in 1983 uh, for Motown 25. I would have liked to see them do a longer medley like some of the other groups did, but they, they went out and they did uh, Someday We'll Be Together, uh, which was really cool. Of course, the uh, Diana Ross, Mary Wilson, and Cindy Birdsong uh, lineup for that. There was this whole controversy back in 1999 in that Diana Ross started to plan a Supremes reunion tour, which would have been awesome. And uh, she contacted Cindy Birdsong and Mary Wilson. Or no, excuse me. The issue was that she did not contact Cindy Birdsong and Mary Wilson. Rather, she had like her representative do it for her. And Mary Wilson was kind of offended that uh, she, she felt like Diana didn't want to talk to her. She's like, we're going to plan a reunion tour, but you're just going to talk to me through your people. And she was also concerned that Diana Ross was going to make uh, most of the money, that it wouldn't be. She wanted a fair split three ways. Um, anyway, there's a lot of factors that led to that tour not happening. Or rather, it did happen with, I forget their names right now, I, I'm sorry, but it happened with a couple of the Supremes members who joined later on in the 70s, and they still, she still kind of passed it off as a bit of a Supremes reunion tour, which I suppose it was, but I, the three of them had never been in the Supremes at the same time, and uh, it just felt weird. It felt like once the whole uh, Mary Wilson, Sandy Bird song thing fell through, there was no point going out with that project anyway. In any case, Diana Ross now is left as the only original member of the, the classic Supremes lineup still with us. That's shocking to me. That's very upsetting. But uh, Cindy Birdsong is still around. Uh, she's uh, been retired for quite some time, though. Uh, to my knowledge, Diana Ross was still touring as of the time that everything shut down for uh, COVID. So the legacy of the Supremes... Uh, lives on in some sort of touring capacity, which is nice. I did get the chance to see Diana Ross live in 2016, and she was wonderful. Um, anyway, yeah, I'm just really shocked uh, to hear this news. Um, it's always especially sad when someone in the, the Motown family uh, passed away, because they were such a family. I, I Again, that's another one of the many video series that I'd like to do, is just the history of Motown, but there's a lot to cover there. I have done history videos on the Temptations and uh, of the Four Tops, and uh, I'll do a Supremes video more in depth a little bit later. But yes, the world lost Mary Wilson, and that is uh, so sad. Um, I, that's it for this vlog. Um, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you with some more upbeat content, I promise, in the near future. Thank you.